This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together Short Bite Edition. Today we are going back to game right and we are doing Abandon All Artichokes. And we all know that artichokes are the thing you don't want in your garden. Because really, who eats artichokes? I don't eat artichokes. Do you eat artichokes, Ariel? I mean, I don't know. Isn't that the thing where you're supposed to eat them and then you... You eat just like... like five percent of it and they like need dipped it, in butter dipped in gut butter and garlic and you know what else is good dipped in butter and garlic garlic knots <laughs> yeah anything really <laughs> abandon my artichokes and, you know what i always you know what i'll about? do I'll, I'll compost my artichokes put them into my garden bed and grow wheat so that i can make garlic knots <laughs> <laughs> the thing i remember was was some sort of a like a top chef or something where they had to do an artichoke heart and all these chefs were trying to get to just the heart of it. And it was like such a long and complicated process for something that in the end didn't really actually look very appetizing. So Remember we had a friend make it as well. And we're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. we just very good. So this game, Abandon All Artichokes, is a deck builder. I'm going to be like, this is my first deck builder, essentially. right? Yeah. So, deck so builder, talk about deck building, yeah. So deck building as a mechanic, it's where you start out with a deck of uh, however many cards. Each player's got the same basic card. Sometimes it's exactly the same. Sometimes it's slightly different, but they're at similar levels of uh, power, let's say strength. And so usually you start out with something that, you know, is usually like money. You can buy something. There's a bunch of different games like this. Dominion is a, a very popular deck builder. Very popular one, yeah. Uh, Star Realms is a deck builder. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, which we've talked about in here, is a deck builder. I really like deck builders, so we have quite a few of them. Um, this is kind of like a, it's it's a it's a baby deck builder. Mm -hmm. So in all of these games, you start out with a hand that's very weak, and throughout the course of the game, you acquire new cards to make your hand better. And and a couple things I like about them, to make your deck better. Your deck better. Yeah. So your hand is a, often a subset of your deck. Right. So one thing that I really don't like in games is to have too many choices because I do get a little bit of you know, analysis paralysis. So one of the things about deck builders is that every turn you're going to draw however many cards from your deck. Let's say like in this game, it's five. I'm going to draw five cards into my hand. That turn, I'm going to play those five cards to the best of my ability. And when my turn is and, over... And very often the order you play those matters. Right, because they, they, you know, they help one another. Maybe you get to draw more cards or do something different. So you play, you, you make your best plays you can with the five cards you've got. And then you discard everything and you draw a new hand of five cards and, from and your deck. And again, what's really important if you haven't played a deck builder is that the discard is your own discard pile. It's not a communal discard right, pile. Right, so you discard and then you'll be recycling into your own deck when your deck runs out. So as the game goes on, you're making your deck stronger and stronger. Usually it's by buying cards, right? So, oh, I've got money and I see these cards I really want. Okay, I'm going to buy this card. And then it goes into my discard. I know eventually it's going to come back into my deck. And at first you always start out deck builders with very few cards. So the cards that you buy are quickly recycled into your hand. Mm -hmm. I like it because you've got five cards or six or whatever it is. And that's all you have. And you're going to make the most of it and play what you can on that. And then you discard them and you move on to the next five. And again, you do the best thing you can. So there's an element of luck in how they're going to come up. And then there is there is strategy in what new cards you want to add to your deck. So in this game, instead of having to buy, you get to just acquire from the garden row. So you, you start out with a hand that's all artichokes and you're and you have 10 artichokes and your goal is to draw a hand of five cards that has no artichokes in it. And that, that can typically happen if you have one or two artichokes left in your deck. So you're trying to get you're not trying not to get rid of all your artichokes. You're just trying to get down to a sufficiently small amount that when you do you, as you said, you draw five, right. you you didn't get any artichokes, game's over. Right. So the first person to draw a hand of five cards with no artichokes wins instantly. So um, on the table, there are five 
vegetable cards that are not artichokes that are face up. Onions, eggplants, potatoes, peppers, carrots, And leeks, on your turn, you like get that. to acquire one of those, put it into your hand, now you, which makes six cards, and then you get to play down on the table however many cards in whatever order you want to. And then you put it all in the discard pile, you draw a new hand up. What's cool about the vegetable cards that you're drawing and that they have actions at the bottom of them. We go, okay, hey, if you have three artichokes in your hand, like I think it's the broccoli card, get rid of an artichoke. Some cards allow you to get rid of an artichoke and then take that vegetable card and you have to then put it into the discard pile of your opponent. Mm -hmm. Or So you got the benefit this hand, but but your opponent's going to get it for next next hand. Yeah, and then, or there's some that's like, okay, um, if if a a certain condition uh, uh, appears, you get rid of the an artichoke and the card you got. So you're actually losing cards out of your hand, Mm -hmm. which makes it harder to draw five cards with no artichokes. So you're kind of balancing... Back and forth. There's some cards that allow you to draw additional cards. There's some cards that allow some vegetables that allow you to draw cards off the top of the the garden deck and then look at them and say, which one do you want to keep and which one do you want to give to your opponent? So you have to make decisions. And so as you're playing the game, you are contending with, you know, what do I pick off the garden pile? What am I drawing out of my deck? And how can I get to a case where I I don't have any artichokes in my hand? It's a super simple, kind of fun. The a lot of fun actually, but like the cards have really good artwork and they're very. They do. I'm always I'm a sucker for anthropomorphized vegetables. I realize (laughs) they're just so cute. You like vegetables that are looking at you. Yeah. Well, you know, we kind of got a little bit of this. But what about when you're eating your vegetables? Little sad eyes. I'm just a piece of broccoli. <laughs> Don't eat me. What well, kind of reminds me? If you are, put some butter and some salt on me. I'll taste great. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those things that you eggplant. Know, I have no love for eggplant. This kind of harkens back though, because one of the first games, our our very first game we ever bought was Carcassonne, but like the second game we ever played was Bonanza. Bonanza, yeah. And that has anthropomorphized beans of different types. And we and got so, the uh, the fan edition that had all these people who drew their own beans. Yeah, which was actually super cute yeah, and fun. Super Dude, and yeah. um, maybe sometime we'll have to talk about Bonanza, Bonanza because yeah. that's a that's a one we used to take with us everywhere. We, Gosh, spent, we, we spent a lot of we we used to <clears throat> we used to go to drive-in movie theaters with our dog and two pizzas. Yeah, and a and a, and a deck of Bonanza. We, deck of Bonanza. We took it camping. We took it everywhere with us to the beach. I mean, yeah, we, we went a lot of places of that. with that game. Um, and so, anyways, that, that one sort of has a deck building dynamic as well, where you're actually drawing cards into your a hand. Bit. But it's the only time we we talk about this all the time. It's the only one of the only games that we've we've played where you're drawing cards and the order of which you draw matters, and you have to hold that in your hand. And there's there's like a trust element there that somebody just isn't going to go, "Hey, I'm going to move this card up a yeah. little bit." Yeah, maybe we'll have to do a review on that because that is one of our old time favorites. Uh, yeah. But this game kind of it reminded me because of the yeah the amorphous amorphous ve- vegetables. vegetables yeah. Um, I love that it, it's it's a deck builder, but deck builders can get very complex. You know, if you play something like Star Realms or even yeah. Harry Potter. And, and, um, and, and the, one of the problems that I always have with deck builders is that if the person you're playing has played a lot of it and they know all of the multiplier cards that are in the deck, what happens is people end up stacking cards. Like, oh, I played this card, which is allows me to draw additional cards and then I get to play these other cards that allows me to draw more cards and then I'm like all of a sudden your opponent is like getting infinite amounts of money infinite amounts of power and they're smacking you with like you know destruction cards or something like that and you're just sitting there thinking like I'm trying to learn how to play this game and they're destroying me and that Mm -hmm. that can be something that happens with people who like to play deck builders is you get into that element where they know the game so well and you, star realms is that like i won't as much as ariel likes to talk about how she she don't want to play no strategy games with <laughs> with, with mr matt she i i do not walk into star, star realm without having cold packs ready and and at least some band-aids in my (laughs) my pocket we only played it once so you didn't get a chance to learn all of the things i had been playing it for a long time on my iphone so i knew the game very well ariel what are you doing over there star realms what are you doing you know what you need to do you just need to get buy me an expansion deck for it that i don't already know and then we'll be on an even playing field so anyways (laughs) i was like walking into the this one of the things that you don't get with that is that, you know, as opposed to something like Star Realms or Hogwarts Battle, 
um, other deck builders, there's so many cards you could buy that are very different. There's only 10 in here. There's only 10 vegetables mm -hmm. besides the artichokes, of course. So the cards that do things, there's not that many to memorize. You don't have to, you know, and, and that's another thing that Dominion does quite well. Mm -hmm. If you kind of want to, um, a more complex deck builder that there's also only 10 cards. I think it's 10 or 12 cards in that. So you know, nobody can have that advantage of knowing the game so well that nobody else can play. Yeah, right. That, you know, other folks don't have a chance. And one thing to talk about, too, you talked about, like, attacking and things. Mm -hmm. This game doesn't have any direct attack No, no direct element. conflict, no. So, you know, if, you're, if you've got kiddos that don't like direct conflict games, this would be perfect for that because mm -hmm. there's some opportunity for you to, like, you and your opponent each turn over a card and whichever one... You know, if, one, if you both have artichokes, you discard. Otherwise, you swap cards. I mean, there can be like a couple of things like that, but there's not really a, a whole lot of attack or take that in this game. So I think from an educational standpoint, kind of getting it back to back to our roots here, uh, I think what's it, it's mostly about strategy, but it's also greatly about probability. Mm -hmm. So you have ten artichokes in your hand. You're keeping track of what your ratio is of normal cards to artichoke cards. Because sometimes there's a card that you'll play that'll help you get rid of an artichoke, but it also costs you because you'll lose that card to your opponent or um, you may something else may happen that's worse. Maybe it would be better at this point to just stuff your deck with more good cards because maybe, like you say, you only have two artichokes left. Mm -hmm take your chances because it's so low that when you recycle your deck and you draw, you're not yeah, going to have... Say you have nine cards, there's a pretty high probability chance that you're going to draw five cards with no artichokes and you'll win. Yeah. Right. I got into a couple of scenarios where I only had, I think we played a couple rounds of this, um, that I only had like four cards and one of them's an artichoke. So it's like, <laughs> I, have to, right. I have to literally play to zero in order to win and then you're over there with like eight or nine cards and then boom you had you had five and i <coughs> there was no chance for me to win yeah i had that po i had that happen to me a few times too where i was so consumed with getting rid of the artichokes that i also lost cards and then my hand became so slim that like you say you had to get rid of every last artichoke when it would have been <laughs> better to stuff my hand with a lot of vegetables so the artichokes would have been rare so there's really good I, probability in yeah. this and good strategy <laughs> With the age range here, you're going to have to read the cards. You're going to have to understand the nuance of what you're doing here. And so this is going to require a little bit older older learner. Maybe I think they have eight years old maybe listed on the box, something of that nature. And you're going to have to be able to sustain that. And that's just not something you can do with like a yeah early learner, maybe even up to 10 years old they have on the tin. I think um, I think eight could definitely play this eight game. Could Se definitely seven, play this. eight. I I think we were talking about you if our be... daughter could read, and she's almost six. If our daughter could read, she would yeah. be a little young, maybe to play this. But I think you could definitely play this as long as you have a seven year old that's you reading. You could even, you know, if you seven, want, eight. you could play as a as an open hand, lay it down because really the transparency of the card decks is really not that important. So you could play an open face version. There's only of... a couple of cards. You might have to remove. There's one card where it allows you to. Look at your opponent's hand, yeah. and then you you probably have to chuck, you probably chuck that one out. Maybe chuck that one, but otherwise. But otherwise, yeah, you can maybe play with an early learner and just explain to them what they're doing. I'm looking for maybe a, a if if you know about a game, put it you know go ahead and comment or send us an email. Put it on the social media. Look for a deck builder game that does not require reading, and it's maybe color, shape, something of that number number based. I think that would be really cool to maybe see if we can get our, our early learner to be able to do a deck builder in that respect. Sushi Go was sort of like that, and she likes playing Sushi Go, but she really doesn't play yeah, it's any... It's not a deck builder, though. Yeah, but she really doesn't play the strategy around it. Yeah, and she she can't really... Even though there's not a lot of reading, there's enough that it's... It yeah. doesn't it doesn't really work. But so this we, is a yeah. totally solid family game. This is one of those games that you, you, know, you can play with an eight-year-old, and you can also play with grandma, oh, and yeah. it's equally enjoyable... Um, great, great. And, and this is the other thing. Why don't you get on your soapbox to talk about tins? Yeah. So I know that Tom Vassell on Dice Tower, if any of you else are nerdy and watch Dice Tower like I do, he hates things in tins. Uh, I, Ariel, who, why is Tom Vassell wrong? Well, okay. So Tom does no longer has a two-year-old, but we do. <laughs> and with a two and five-year-old, I got to say, 
I'm loving on the tins. We we have a bunch of different games. Obviously, we have tons, but we have a bunch of different game right games. Some of those games have come in tins. We have others that are in boxes. Like Sleeping Queens is a good example. That's in a box. Forbidden Island is in a tin. We have played both. I don't know how many times. Sleeping Queens at this point is it's showing some wear and tear. As much as we try to be kind to it, we still have a five year old. She gets excited to play games. She rushes in. She grabs the box. She rips it open. You know. Thank goodness for tins. So this comes in a nice artichoke artichoke shaped tin. It's very cute. Yes, it makes it hard to stack. And I know that that's why they don't like them. It makes it hard to put this on the shelf, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. The, for the durability aspect, I like it in a cute little tin. It's great and totally portable. You could take it with you if you were going to go on an airplane trip or something like this is a great game to take along with mm-hmm. you. So I, it's just another, I don't know, what can I say? It's another totally solid family game from Game Right. I, they keep, it's. I think it's on the newer end. I think maybe Ariel, it came out last year. You but. just bought it off of, off of the Amazons for how much? Yeah, well, it was on sale, but usually I think it's like, I don't know, 10 bucks maybe or 12 bucks. Super, super affordable. That's the thing too. It's in a tin and it's really affordable. Um, so I just don't think you can really go wrong with Game these. Right. They can't keep getting away with this. I know. I feel like this is the Game Right show. We just, I don't know if we reviewed every one of their games, but I feel like it's almost. So, <laughs> but you know, these are all just, they're all just solid. Wait, wait, who is the, uh, who is the designer on this one? Oh, 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 oh. Did they have it? One moment, please. Do, 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 do. <laughs> let's see if they, let's see if they list it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. This was designed by Emma Larkins with illustrations by Bonnie Pang. So just Good wanted job, to Bonnie. We like your illustrations. Shout out to that. Yeah. Great illustrations. So abandon all artichokes. Ah, it's a heartless card game. Ha ha. Heartless. Ha ha ha. <laughs> nice fun, guys. So anyway, great game. Definitely head out and uh, and get this one. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!